This is kind of a uh, spur of the moment video. Sorry I haven't been posting. My computer is having problems and it doesn't want to, like it'll load and then it will freeze. So I'm trying to fix that right now so I'm gonna have to edit on my laptop for now. But I was walking in Shinnanhyun Station. There was like a girl that looked like Carson. My friend Carson, if you know or heard of her. It looked just like her, but she was like really, really tall. So I thought maybe it's not her. I didn't want to be like, you know, to see if it was her. So I ended up just like not checking if it was her. But anyway, I remember we used to have like this sort of like live talk show sort of thing called Gul Jam, Honey Jam. <laughs> On Africa TV, that live broadcasting service that's kind of like the Korean Twitch, we had like a small group of people that would watch that and it made me sort of think about a lot of things that I've done on my YouTube channel or, you know, experiences I've had where, I don't know, I feel like some people might be wondering like, whatever happened to this, whatever happened to that, or whatever happened to this person. I wrote down some things that I thought that I could give you sort of like updates on or sort of clarify some things, I guess. I had this cute sweater on, I don't know why I took it off. Put it back on. I think one of the videos that really like helped my channel like grow quickly was that one I posted a long, long time ago called doing like, oh my God, back when I used to do like all caps tat. I'm kind of like going through this phase where it's just like a short sentence on the heels of all these like relatable YouTubers, just like really short, random quirky video titles. But it was like doing a K-pop idol trainee's makeup. And it was like all the question marks. Oh, but in the video, I was doing this guy's makeup. His name is Nikki Park, and he was an idol trainee. I honestly don't know what he's doing anymore. I know he released a song around the same time that I released my first song. But um, a lot of people were wondering whatever happened to our friendship. Like, why do we not talk to each other, follow each other anymore? I know there were like, I honestly, I, I wasn't really keeping up with what people were saying, but I know there were some people that were coming from his channel to my channel that were kind of like upset at me, I guess. And I feel like it was so long ago, I don't think it's worth anybody or anybody should go to his social media to say anything. I honestly just stopped talking because I just felt like our personalities don't really match very well. I know a lot of people like enjoyed like our sassiness on camera, but like off camera, I just wasn't really, I just didn't, I don't think our personality types matched and I couldn't really handle his very well. But that's pretty much it. There was no like beef, I don't think. I guess I could have done a better job at communicating why I didn't feel like talking to him anymore, but I just, that's just how I've always been. I'm not very good with like, ah, oh, goodbyes. If I'm not really vibing with someone, I just stop talking to them. But I guess later on that comes to bite me in the ass because then people are like, oh yeah, I remember. Because there's so many people where like they'll meet one of the people that I know and they'll be like, oh, I used to talk to Edward, but he, he got too famous for me. But I'm like, I've said this before, but I'm just not the type of person to constantly contact every single person that I've ever talked to or met. I tend to keep my really close friends close. Uh, hopefully he's doing well in life. Um, I think he's still living in Seoul. There was that thing with Carson that I said, Guru Jam. We came up with this cute idea of like, having this talk show. Because Africa TV, when they created their kind of like, because honey, Africa TV was like flopping really hard in Korea after like the little scandals or like whatever that they had with their really big um, broadcasters. They created like the international version of it, which was also a flop. But I think later on they like combined it together with the regular Africa TV, but that still flopped. They're trying to recruit, I guess, YouTubers. So me and Carson were. Carson's like, she's like a model actress, so but she's kind of like in our little group or circle. They're like, oh, like, could you broadcast on Africa TV? And they even sent us like webcams and everything. And so Carson came up to me with the idea of like, oh, we should do some sort of like joint talk show. And I was like, oh, that's cute. And what it really just came down to, and we were doing it, but it just came down to like the technical difficulties. Like we would go to the Africa TV like office, like the place where they hold gaming competitions because they had like a broadcasting station studio thing there. It was fun, but just trying to get to start was like really annoying. We did have like a small group of people that would watch like max like a hundred ish people. We had a really good time on there, but conflicting with our schedules and it being consistent was just not going to happen. Oh God, I remember we had some sort of like, it wasn't a giveaway. There was, we did this sort of event and then we would send them like as a prize, like little Polaroids of us. I fucking lost the Polaroids like when I was walking outside. I never sent those to the people, but I felt really bad. Yeah, sorry about that if you're one of the winners. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm like having this uh, with live stream. I actually bought a new webcam because the idea of live streaming like on Twitch or something was like, it was, it was an attractive idea to me, but I'm just a really fucking lazy person. I just, uh, 
because I, I don't know if I can play video games and talk at the same time. And you know, they do have just like the chatting feature. Personally, I don't want it to be one of those things where it's like, I'm using my YouTube to like, I open Twitch. Uh, I will kind of want to build like a whole new Twitch audience, if that makes sense. Oh, this tastes like vomit. Another show that I did was this one called Beauty Beasts. <laughs> It was a show that had me, my friend, uh, Eddie, the other Eddie, his Korean name is Yongguk, which is the Korean word for England, which is kind of cute. Ki Young, who's like this fashion, Korean fashion creator, and Leo J, who's like a, well, he's a real makeup artist, but he has like a YouTube channel where he does uh, makeup contents. Um, and the show Beauty Beast was basically a kind of like beauty program, kind of like in the vein, like I gave him the idea of doing a show similar to um, Beauty Break. Uh, the one with those girls where they like, at the time, they were just like testing random makeup and so I thought it would be a good idea if we did the same thing. But it was it was more of like a, uh, like I don't know the exact details, but it was kind of like a project for our company to just try out. Now I will say, I felt like the numbers that they were trying to aim for were a little bit high, especially for the short time span that the first season was in. And we obviously didn't make those numbers. We still had like a decent sized audience of like, 30,000 followers, which who were mostly from my channel, to be honest. I did kind of feel bad that a lot of people that were coming on were coming on, I, f I feel like we're coming on for me and Eddie's. It was very like separated. I wanted to be where everyone was like in every video, but it became very like Edward and Youngook and Leo J and Kyung, and that kind of like separated the audiences. And so I felt like the show was very divided in that sense. I know a lot of people enjoyed it, had a really good time. I had a good time filming it, but it never really went anywhere. It did end obviously after, I think it was three months. And it wasn't because like, oh, like we were breaking up. It was just because it was only meant for one season at the time. I talked with my company a lot about doing a season two, but it would have to be with like different members maybe or add new members because everyone else is doing like their own thing now. I don't know. I just feel like YouTube has changed a lot recently. Like I feel like it's always changing, but right now, I, I mean, it could be fun, but I feel like the trend right now is very like, at least I think in my head, like this sort of situation, very like personal, very like real, very like back like old YouTube days. I feel like the super high production sorts of shows, high production is or high production, you know, those really more produced shows. I, I, I could be totally wrong, honestly, but I just feel like it's not what people are exactly looking for. We're thinking about it, a season two of Beauty Beast. But um, for now, what we were doing, that ended a while ago. So uh, everyone's doing well, but the show is more of like a little sort of experiment in a way to kind of test the waters in that area. I did a video where I was like, oh, updates in my life. And I was talking about how our and Friday were gonna live with me. Obviously that's not, I think I said this in a different video as well. That's obviously not gonna happen anymore because Aura moved to Indonesia. The camera stopped recording, I didn't even realize. Aura moved to Indonesia and it's gonna be Korea where he's gonna be visiting every now and then. Yeah, and then Friday has to take care of his parents. He's just gonna be living at home like he always has. So I guess I'm just gonna be living in this three bedroom apartment by myself. Uh, I just made what would have been Aura's room a guest room. Uh, where Will actually, Will is visiting Korea, so he's making use of that guest room. And then the other room that I used to edit videos in, that's just gonna be like my closet, because uh, I have so many damn clothes. But yeah, I'm kind of happy with like how my house is looking now. It's just, girl, I need to clean this shit. It's always like, I clean it, and then like, I make it messy like the same day that it's finally clean. I just... Trophy Cat, um, I said that our song EXO was gonna be released like, like a month or two ago. Girl, she never happened. The main reason is because um, we have we still haven't filmed the music video. It's because the guy that usually films my music videos is going through some stuff right now, and he's been so so busy. I don't want to keep bothering him because we're close friends, and for me to keep bothering him about it, it's, it almost makes it feel like I'm just basing our friendship off of him filming videos for me. I don't want that to be the case, so that will happen eventually. I don't know when, but uh, we did perform the song at Nami Song, like with full choreography and everything, full final mastered version. It was a good time. Um, <clears throat> girl, that choreography was 
oh, fucking hard. If you're a dancer, you might know what I'm talking about, but, or maybe not because you're a better dancer than me. I always felt like whenever I'm practicing, I'm like, oh yeah, I know the moves. I'm like doing this, this so smooth and like so cool. But then I watch footage of me like played back and it really looks like I'm half-assing it. More than I thought, you really have to like move like big. So you know when a perf an artist perf or an idol performs a song so many times throughout their career that they kind of, not necessarily half acid, but they kind of like just do the move more casually rather than be like really into it. Oh, I was having my moment even though I've never fucking performed the song before. But then I watched the fucking live footage and I was just like, wow, I look really exhausted and tired, which I was because it was like the second to last song of the set and it was really hot outside. I had like long sleeves and like black jeans. And I was trying to remember the words at the same time as like trying to remember the choreography because it was so like we were so cut pressed for time preparing for Nami song. I really like that song. I really want it to come out like now. It's gonna end up being a fucking lyric video. <laughs> and then just for fun, I don't know if you anybody know, know I feel like I've said this a few times before, is I'm a huge, huge perfume fan. Uh that J-pop Electro pop group from Japan. Huge fan since the first album game. All the choreography. But there was one song in particular off their album Triangle called The Best Thing. They only performed it one, not once, but they performed it on one certain tour for their fans. So you have to be like a, a member of the fan club. They did record their performance, but it's on this DVD that you have to buy as a fan club member. She got on Torrent. But yeah, they only ever performed it on that one tour because it was it's just a regular album song, but I fucking, it was like my favorite song on the album. But it's such a cute song. Repetitive, but really cute. So I asked Friday to make a Trophy Cat version and we did. And we actually performed it at Nami Sun. Performed, uh, I was like wobbling around stage, struggling to remember the words because I actually rewrote the uh, lyrics in English. It was like a week before. But what I wanted to do was, I saw that music video by uh, Doja Cat Moo, where she literally like wrote the song in one day and also filmed the music video on her MacBook on Photo Booth, where you can like, it's sort of like that green screen effect. So I got inspiration from that. So I wanted to film something like that. I actually already filmed it, but the camera settings on my camera were not correct. So I'm gonna have to redo it again, but I did in front of like a blue screen. And it's like this special little video that I want to make just for fun, because fuck around like that. But uh, it's a really cute song, so I can't wait for that to come out. But it's just a matter of my laziness and when I can refilm that shit. So <laughs> that ish. I need to stop doing that because I keep making all these promises of like videos that I'm, I say I'm going to make or things I'm going to do but I'm not ever doing this. So I'm just never going to say anything. Speaking of which, Buji, the collaboration I said I was going to do with Ace. I did talk about this already on Jones Q&A and also in my three hour interview with Alex. But obviously not everyone watched those videos. So um, I said it was like a, a month, two months ago on my Instagram. I was like, oh, you know, I'm the opportunity to maybe collab with Ace that um, idol group came up like, oh, if you're a fan of Ace, if you have any questions for them, like uh, go ahead and tell me so I can ask them. Literally the same night that I posted that Instagram story, uh, the CEO of the company messaged us and I was like, girl, what is this? And it was these fans, which half frustrating, but also half hilarious because he sent like a screenshot of like this email that was very like, obvious. even I could tell very clearly written in like Google Translator. Girl, she wrote a whole fucking letter complaining, put it through Google Translator and sent this to the CEO. Apparently they got several emails. They were talking about like, oh my God, like do not work with Edward Avila. If you let him work with them, Ace, then we're gonna boycott Ace. And I was just like, Ace is kind of like, kind of like slowly gaining popularity. So to avoid anything, we wanted to like not go through the collab, which is fine. From their standpoint, I was, I was totally understanding. But I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, let's be honest, Ace isn't that popular even in Korea. And yes, while the popular is slowly growing, I don't see how boycotting Ace if I do a video with them is going to help Ace. I mean, you don't have to like me, you don't have to like my opinions, but if you start like fucking messing with my work, that's where I get like really upset. And also I felt kind of bad for like the Ace fans. I feel like that would have been like a fun video to do, whatever video we would have done, but because of like a few like little snowflakes, <laughs> that's not happening. So at this point, I'm just never gonna mention if I'm working with certain groups, if the opportunity ever comes up, 
And also that interview with Alex, that three hour one, honey, if you have, if you are fucking bored and have nothing to do for three hours, I will link the interview I did with Alex um, down below. We talk about literally everything. I get real controversial in that video. I spill all the tea. Now we talk about a lot of very touchy subjects, I guess. So yeah, hopefully that kind of cleared the air on some mysteries about my, my life that nobody fucking cares about. Bye.